the Black Pound Report, what can I say? Back in 2018, I just had enough and I just felt, listen, I need to see a change in the industry. The way the advertising industry is communicating about diverse communities, um, they need some help. It's almost as though they need a phone with me on the dial to say, Lydia, am I making the right decision? Because we had situations like the Gucci blackface jumper, Katy Perry, um, Prada with the gollywogs on the bag. The list is endless. And, you know, um, what Gucci did with um, people eating pizza with chopsticks. And I just thought, <laughs> I was just bowing my head too much. It was just too, it was just ridiculous. Anyway, so this research looks into the economical value of multi-ethnic consumers within the UK. As most of you will know that in 2010, 11, IPA did some research and shared a statistic that 300 billion was the disposable income of multi-ethnic consumers in the UK. And I felt to myself, there's probably, there's definitely more to this. I love this research. What can we do to expand upon it and build upon it? And I think that's one of the speakers said earlier, moaning doesn't get you anywhere. The moaning groaning society does not get you anywhere. It's all about solutions and what we can do to bring about real change. So off I did, off I went, um, stopped working for a year and self-funded the first UK's Black Pound Report. And it was just incredible the, from the insights that I learned about what, how people felt about representation on television. 66% um, out of the 300 people consumers that I was able to interview, do surveys with, said that they didn't feel fully satisfied with the current representation on TV, including adverts. And then it came to 70% of the respondents also said that they didn't feel valued as a consumer in the UK. And that took me back to an experience in my early 20s, myself and my best friend, she's from Ireland, we both walk into a store together to buy makeup. And I inquired about, you know, a shade for me and I got shade. She said to me, no, actually, um, you know what? We only stock normal colors here. She's still living, she is still living. But um, I just couldn't believe it because when I looked at her and I looked at my friends and I said, I don't think she just realizes uh, <laughs> what she just said to me. We only stock normal colors here. And that did really hurt. I make light of it, but it really did hurt because if you imagine you're in your twenties, you're being told that you're not worth marketing to. You're being told that you have to travel miles and miles and miles to find a product for yourself. And I remember saying to my friends, one day I'm going to do something about this. And she just said, OK, Lids, but it's going to be a long time. And I said, there's got to be a time that you and I can walk into a store together and get our hair done at the same store. Why do I have to go here and you have to go there? You see, because I'd grown up with um, my white best friend all of my life and she's still part of my life today. So I didn't think about us having experiences separately, especially shopping, you know? And that was one of the things that stuck with me for a long time. Okay, I'm looking at the minutes, I'm looking at the minutes. So this research, <laughs> stop laughing. This research is all about cultural intelligence, cultural transformation. And this year, I'm really glad to see that there's such appetite now, especially, unfortunately, I have something very sad with George Floyd from last year, um, with what happens with him. The world woke up. We had a collective consciousness of a different level this time. I mean, obviously, we've had the Martin Luther Kings, Malcolm X's, and we've had different generational speakers over the years. I'm not the first. I stand on the shoulders of many before me, um, and I'm sure they're with me in spirit to make sure that we bring about this change and it's not just being about walking into a shop and feeling like a valid consumer but it has a real knock-on effect to what's happening in business we're seeing a lack of representation at the top which is why it accelerates there to train the next generation of ceos and this upcoming generation they are not messing you know they're demanding more when you get when they look at your business they want to know how diverse are you what does your ceo look like you know, what's happening with your figures? What's your sustainability? What's your message? You know, do you appeal to me? Do you just appeal to me product wise, but do you appeal to me service wise? Do you have the right decision makers at your table? You know, because surely when Gucci got out that blackface jumper, they didn't have enough diversity at the table. Or what was the environment? Is it a gaslighting environment or what? We don't, it just 
purges so many questions. And that's why this year I'm really excited to get the chance to um, partner with some brands now. I don't have to lose my house this time, which I was close to with felt, you know, funding the last research work with some um, ethical brands and I use the word ethical how many oh my gosh six seconds that is cruel oh my god that's absolute cruelty the black pound has got one second left I finish here so if you want to find out more about it and you won't have a chance to ask me any questions I'll put my link into the chat box and you can you know learn more about the research and find out what I'm doing this year it's going to be really exciting thank you very much for your time